Welcome to PK Woodworking. And for many of you observant people out there in the listening uh, audience, you'll notice that over the course of the last, I don't know, six, eight, nine months, some random machines have shown up in my shop. And today I've got a couple of them that I need to clean up and one of them that I need to really uh, fix. So I've shown some of those, but I wanted to go along and kind of give you the gist of some of these machines that I've got in the shop. I'll show you a few of them. I'm not gonna demo all of them, but I am gonna go over two of them that I really need to work on today. So here's two of them. So this is a Hoffman uh, PP2, and uh, I got this used um, for a great deal, less than the cost of a small single motor version of it. So I'll go over that because I need to replace a couple of parts on here that um, were probably the reason why I got it for such a great deal, but um, that was awesome. And then secondarily, I've got this Powermatic um, 750HD uh, hollow chisel mortiser that uh, I happened to find like really far away from me when I was actually there with my truck and uh, picked that up and uh, not made any more, um, but I'll show you why I think it's super cool while I'm cleaning it up. Let's move on. This is a spindle boring machine from Laguna. Uh, this I'm not gonna go over today, but I will, um, or fix today, cause I've already done it, but I will give you kind of an overview right now, kind of what, what went down with it. So the person that had this, I don't know uh, how they acquired it, um, maybe when they left the shop or something like that, but it's a three phase machine and it also needs air to run. It's got a big cylinder that can move the 21 spindles to bore horizontally or vertically, either way you want to bore. And you can even do 45 degrees, it moves with that. And it's got the clamps across the top, but it's a three phase machine. And when uh, he couldn't get it to work, it was missing about um, 16 of the actual spindles. So those spindles, if you buy them from uh, any place in the US are pretty pricey. So um, I got an amazing deal on it. It needs a couple of things. It needs a, a couple of um, fences that go here. And I think I've got solutions for that. Um, but uh, works fantastic. I hooked it up. I tried to hook it up and the cord, the power cord that they had given me with it was only for regular 220 volts. So it was missing the third leg anyway of the three phase. I think the guy didn't understand that. So that's why he could never get it to work. But uh, I cleaned it all up. Um, it was a mess. The, the top was really bad, but uh, got it pretty close. It all works great. It takes up a lot of space in the shop. And this is really made for somebody who's pumping out cabinets. Um, but I think it's worthwhile for me because even when I'm making some furniture and I wanna have adjustable shelves, this is really the way to do it. I have the, the Festool jig, but that takes a long time. This is like, you put this in it, you decide how many of these holes you wanna drill, you press that foot button and it drills them all instantaneously. So um, really cool machine and again, one of these ones that I got for just an amazing price. And then those people at AliExpress, they're so nice. They had all of those parts for the chucks and for the drills for this for pennies on the dollar compared to what you'd pay for them in the US. And they're the exact same thing. I'm not always down for doing that, but in this one, it was a budget machine. It was the right thing to do for me. Again, this one's probably been one of the longest ones. This is a North Tech automatic dovetail machine. And uh, I, do, I do want at some point in time an Omec, but man, they're they expensive. Um, again, got this used from a shop in San Diego and uh, the guy basically stopped using it and started just ordering drawers because you know he has a bigger kind of operation per se. But uh, works great, um, I just need to, like to have a job to actually use it for to show you guys, but everything seems to work great. It's wired up good. Air works fantastic. Nothing to do to it other than uh, maybe polish up and remove some of the residue for where people tape it. I don't know, you're gonna find out probably when I do this, but there's a lot of finessing to get these machines to get, basically do things that you want to do with the thickness of the drawers that you pick, etc. 
So a lot of people mark these things up. There was signs taped all over this machine, basically, and tape that was put in to shim whatever to get it to do the, the um, dovetails exactly how you wanted. Until you get into the really, really, really pricey machines like the cost of a car, I think that you, most of the ones I've seen in production seem to look the same way. But um, I'm excited about it. When I get a job where I can uh, make a bunch of drawers, I'll uh, whip it out and show everybody how it works. Built a cart um, to put these two on, but um, I've got an Omal um, hinge, hinge boring machine. Uh, I drove all the way to Salt Lake City to pick this up. It's really in pristine condition. The top is new. Um, I don't know if it was ever used that much at all. I think uh, they must have gotten a CNC right after they were given this by Celiche. A lot of companies that order a lot of stuff from uh, hinge companies get these machines super cheap. So anyways, it's complete. It's got the extra sets of um, uh, fences that let it go out farther and uh, works like a champ. And got something else to show you too. The, the I guess, design of this machine from uh, Omal has a really terrible um, solution for dust collection. And I ordered it and it was this. They charged $134 for this and it doesn't even work. So. Um, my dad and my brother, pretty genius with uh, CAD and or 3D printing, came up with this solution right here. It's got some magnets and a screw to hold it on and we're kind of testing it. I've got a few more things to do to it, but um, works fantastic. I don't know, maybe someday we'll sell it as a company, who knows. Last one that showed up that's on this card also is the multi-router. So, um, uh, a lot of people argue about like the multi-router versus another one, but um, this one was such another one of those great deals on OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace. I don't remember which one, but it was local. And uh, the guy was super cool. He was selling it for a friend of his. And, uh, and I went down and talked to him for a while. Uh, I also ended up getting the uh, pneumatic clamps from Woodpecker because now Woodpecker supports this now. Um, this is the original version, not the woodpecker version, but they're all kind of semi-interchangeable. And then I got the dust hood that they sell to go on top of the router. So these were all some great deals that just showed up in the shop because of like Facebook Marketplace or um, Craigslist or OfferUp. And even the one that I was talking about previously from Salt Lake City, that's actually from the KSL, which if you, you know, you know. But um again, couldn't pass them up, things I wanted anyway. Um, and so I picked them up. So not everything in my shop is new. You know, as a matter of fact, only when I'm, when I get the saw delivered, um, five of all of the machines that I have will, I have purchased new. Um, and two of them, I got super lucky and got pretty significant discounts on. Found them unused. So this um, is not the condition that I found it in. <laughs> this is much better than it was. Um, there was, it was in a machine area and I think the person had purchased it from like one of the online auctions at some point in time and then just let it sit around and it got really um, disgusting. So it, some of the tops got a little pitted but it's like all aluminum I think anyway. So um, it cleaned up pretty nicely. Um, I do still want to dump some of these parts like right here into some evaporust. I want to do the same thing for, um, for a couple of the other parts on it, but it still needs a little bit more cleanup. But what it really needs to do is I need to show you on the back kind of the electrics, kind of what happened with that. Machine cabinet in the back is, was clean. There is a part, I think a pneumatic switch that at some point in time I'll probably need to replace. Um, but I'm holding off. It's not expensive. It's just I'm gonna hold off um, This part right here is one of the funny parts that I need to kind of solve so See this little piece of tape here. It's really nice. That was their plan for keeping it turned on So this particular machine is pretty well known 
that um, over time that these switches can wear out. So um, you can order them online. It's got a built in, uh, I guess, overload protection inside of the switch. So that's why um, it's kind of a thing. So I'm gonna pull this off to replace that. But at the same time, somewhere along the way, somebody had pulled this off and decided not to reinstall it with, as you can see here, with the wire going through a cable gland. Instead, they came in through these back holes right here. So I am going to reinstall it when I do it with a cable gland here so that it looks more factory. Um, and also it doesn't have a hole here for just dust to fall through. It does have its own dust collection built into it. I don't know how good it is because I really haven't played with that yet, but I guess we'll get to there at some point in time. So I'm gonna go get a gland and then we can get moving. Okay, not the exact same color, but close enough. So uh, let's get the, uh, the uh, routers out. So these are two proprietary routers um, from Hoffman and I need to take this one out anyway because I need to put in um, these little blocks. So these blocks right here, what they're for is to um, basically route um, a zero clearance kind of situation through these blocks. So I'm gonna have to put those in anyway and then I'm missing, this one had a straight cut bit in it so I don't know what's up with that but I need to replace that with a, so let's, uh, Pull this out. There we go. Something flew off. I don't know what that was. Um, but I would pull off these back screws and then we'll replace this sucker. Okay, so I had to do a little repair here. Um, the old um, switch uses a slightly different way of attaching it. So I am gonna use some crimp connectors on the new one because it's screws that are instead there. So I'm gonna cut off the uh, soldered part and then we'll Crimp on some new ring terminals. We'll do ring terminals on it. Like so. Now, when I was at um, IWF in Atlanta, I talked to the cool people at Hoffman, told them about my great deal. And because I was there, um, they were offering discounts on everything for, the, for when you were at the uh, show which meant I got a discount on parts and I also got a discount on some of the keys and things I needed to get. So pop it back in, we are ready to go. Back in business over here. So I'm going to reinstall this. I guess everything in Europe is a 22, so it's a 22. Let's see if this fits in. All right, let's see. Result. 
Okay, so clean the schmutz off of everything with um, some of that um, Evaporust. The actual replacement hose for this uh, foot pedal is actually $67. It comes with the outside piece and all the inside pieces. And I also need to replace a kip lever that was missing that goes right here. So I'll give them a call on Monday and uh, see if I can just order the hoses separate or if that's cheaper or whatever, and then get one of these and then we are dialed and ready to go. So you might be asking Paul, like what the hell does this thing even do? And I would refer you to Extreme Woodworker, uh, one of my friends on YouTube. I like to call him my friend and he has a uh, whole set of videos that he's used the smaller like um, bench top version of this, um, which works the exact same way. But it makes little dovetail holes that they sell keys for so you can do incredibly tight 45 degree miters, etc. And you can also use to stack moldings on top of each other and keep them incredibly tight. So uh, he does a better job than I would. So I would just refer you down below. I'll attach that video in the description down below. This is my Powermatic, uh, like I said before, 750 HD. Uh, yeah, I don't know why they don't make it anymore. I honestly don't. Maybe they didn't have that many people that wanted to get it. Maybe there's something flawed with it that I don't know about yet. Um, but it does need a, a serious cleaning. Um, and then um, I'll talk a little bit about what it does too. So hang on a second. It's got an arm here. It's got an arm on the other side and then the traditional pull down arm on the top. Um, and what makes this thing a little different than others is that the, the actual um, table stays stationary when you're making a hollow chisel mortise. What changes is the actual table and I need to make sure it's not long. Oh, it's not, it just needs a little, little love still. So this actually moves it side to side. So as you're cutting holes, you can move it, cut a hole, move it, cut a hole. Um, there are other machines where this part actually moves right here. Um, I think I like this better. There's another arm on this side that actually moves it in and out. And all of these arms um, are able to be repositioned. So they have like spring loads on them and you just basically pull up on it and reposition the arm. So I can get the arm out of the way if I want to. I can move it closer. And that gives me access to be able to go all the way across and all the way back on this machine. So all of the actual um, arms do the same thing, including uh, the, the main arm here. So that it comes down a little farther so you can actually use it. Um, I'm thinking that this thing needs a new strut. So the strut from Powermatic is ridiculously expensive. So I'm gonna to try to find the strut um, somewhere else via whatever part numbers on this strut, but uh, don't need to get that anytime soon. But it does need a seriously cleaning. The ways have a teeny bit of surface rust on them and that um, gets cleaned up and I'll put on some lubrication and I'm sure that thing will work amazing. So uh, this thing is way heavier than it said it was. Um, it said in the, um, in the uh, manual, it was like 500 pounds. This thing almost killed me. Like this thing is way heavier than 500 pounds. All of the top part here is pretty much all solid cast iron parts. And it's a little top heavy. It's got some surface rust down here. So I'm gonna take that off and hopefully my bath in, um, Evapo rust will just get the surface rust and leave the paint like it's supposed to. And then the rest of it, I'll just kind of clean up as we go. So let's get to that. As usual, the ask is um, like, did I need to do anything to this? Um, and honestly, there was only one thing wrong with it. Um, the front um, power box, the two small um, screws, plastic screws, that attached it to it were actually broken off. And so far that is literally everything. This is got a cool little cabinet in the back. Came with all the tools that it came with. Um, I was able to order a manual for it, like a bound manual for it for Pat from Paramatic. 
um, super cheap. And then it came with a whole set of extra hollow chisel, 11 different um, chisels that came with it. Um, and I didn't know it because the person who was helping me load it in was doing it for someone else. We pulled it away from the wall and he never even knew this cabinet was back there. Neither did I. I popped it open and there was boxes of stuff in there. And so it's a cool little place to keep all that stuff behind it and be useful. And again, like typical Powermatic, overbuilt. Um, it's made in Taiwan and I want to correct myself. Um, it's actually a 1.5 horsepower and it's a 220 machine, like I said. And this was manufactured in April of 2006. So we got like an 18 year old machine here. So this part right here at the bottom is so that you can mortise longer pieces. So if you want to, you can remove the actual table and it mounts on this little side mount over there. And now you have the ability to use this machine with this as a foot holding something up and being able to go uh, to, for a, a much bigger piece of wood to, to do it with. This table also rotates to 45 degrees, which is kind of fun too. So um, anyway, let me try to remove this. So cleaned off the back, definitely needed a little bit of love, but uh, cleaned up really nice. I don't know what Powermatic does for their powder coat, but pretty good. Now I'm gonna try to uh, see what's going on in my evapo rust. We can clean up some of these ways really quick. Get this to move nice and easy. These ballastol wipes pretty awesome for this stuff. You just don't get the crap everywhere. And that's good for me right now because I just cleaned everything else. So I'm just gonna wipe it on here real quick and then I'm gonna use a little bit of this Scotch-Brite, take off some of the surface rust. These are all like, I don't know how precision it is, but seems great. Let's clean it off. And this ballastol stuff kind of protects it at the same time. So not only does it help me clean it up, but gives it a little bit of lubrication and cleans it up. So hopefully this is all it needs. And then she'll be moving nice and smooth. Oh yeah, there we go. So let's just get this done on the other side too. Let me get a fresh one of these. Uh, no, I think we're good. We've got some more we haven't used. The ballast also.
that. Looks good. We'll see how good she moves back and forth in a second. Well, I'm a train wreck. Oh yeah, much better. That's what we're looking for right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna put a little bit more PTFE on there and then we'll be good to go. So this PG2000 is like my go-to here. Stuff is so good. Just wipe off the excess and we'll be ready to rock. Oh yeah. All right. That cleaned up really nice. All right, so let's give you some beauty shots of this thing. Really cleaned up nice. This um, bottom part right here is definitely gonna require some kind of paint maybe. I protected it with some ballastol and we'll see, but she cleaned up so nice. Looks brand new. And inside the cabinet, that's actually rubber on that cabinet face right there, which is great. It protects all those. She is a keeper. Thank you for watching. I was getting lots of questions about those, so I figured I would just kind of knock it out in one shot there. Um, appreciate uh, the viewership. And um, uh, in the next couple of weeks, maybe a month, I'm gonna actually end up probably moving my dust collector and my air compressor uh, outside to a little um, pad that I had poured originally out in the back that I thought might need to have my dust collector and air compressor out there. So I don't know if you wanna see it. If you do wanna see it, put it in the comments below. Otherwise, um, up here, is a video of what I did last time and my son and I are putting up that um, the uh, small area for my last dust collector outside of the garage shop. So anyways, have a good one and I'll see you on the next one.